Does anyone have any announcements? Any? <laughs> yes, go for it. If you don't want to be in the dunk tank, let us know who we need to ask so that you will come to the event. We want everyone at the event, so if you and need someone at the dunk, in the dunk tank. You need to out of the water. This is your moment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's your chance. And of course, we need cookies for the event. If, you know, none of those other things sound good to you, but you're an expert cookie baker. We do need cookies also. So we are super excited. Please make sure you take, excuse me, one of these home. And then if this, this there, there aren't enough on your table, there's more out there. Grab one and give it to a friend. Invite anyone who might want to have all this fun because it's going to be a fantastic event. And of course, you know, there's all the fun times of socializing with your church friends. So we hope to see you there. Amen. All right. Any other announcements? The rummage sale is, uh, let's see, it's less than a month away now. So there's, I'm not going to go into details. It's, the info's out there. It's on the table over there. There's a whole bunch of sign up. So, uh, with God. And uh, <laughs> what else? Um, oh yeah, board meeting next month, September 10th after the second service. So see all our board members there for that. Uh, any other announcements? How about prayer concerns? Yes. Sandra's granddaughter Tess was diagnosed with COVID last week, and Sandra spent some time with her, so please keep that family in your prayers. Tess was having a really bad day on Friday. She was really sick. Oh, no. Okay. That's just the point out. All right. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, my uh, granddaughter, Delaney, uh, hit the head with volleyball. She got a concussion. She's doing better. With the volleyball? Oh, yeah, volleyball. She plays volleyball. Oh, wow. There's a lot of concussions in my I thought they had, I thought you said softball. I assume softball, because that's no, no, volleyball. Volleyball. Oh, Jeez Louise. Did they check the girl for steroids that hit her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna let my kids play badminton.
Father, we come before you this day to offer you praise and thanksgiving, and we humbly ask, Lord, that your Spirit would be with each and every one of us. Fill us, Lord. Draw us close to you. And today, Lord, we give you thanks for life of discipleship. We give you thanks that we get to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every day of our lives and that, that everyone is welcome. Everyone can follow Jesus. We give you thanks for this. We give you thanks for all the, the wonderful people that are in our lives, that, that love us and encourage us and guide us along this path with our Lord. And today, loving God, we, uh, we continue to ask your blessing upon Miranda and her family. We ask for uh, healing for her and that she uh, get that liver transplant as soon as possible. But we also ask for healing for, uh, for Sandra's granddaughter Tess. Pray that uh, she uh, will recuperate soon and, and uh, that uh, her family stays well as well. And we ask for healing for Dan's granddaughter Rainy and a full recovery for her. Continue to ask for healing for Paula. We pray that this new treatment works and eases her pain. And we give you thanks that, uh, that for the answered prayer that, that, uh, that Jamie mentioned. We give you thanks for all the prayers that you answer every day of our lives. And, and for all the miracles that we don't notice, all the things. All the wonderful blessings that meet us throughout our days. And we pray all this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. Won't be lost. 
still good. I mean, still just as good. Kind of like that. The, the, I like that. Uh, pointing them in the right direction, giving them a direction. And that's something we, we all, all of us grown ups, have the opportunity to do for our kids in the congregation and, and for each other. We get the opportunity to, to point them in the right direction. And I like to, uh, I like that idea of giving kids a, a, a direction. Direction. That's why I am with my, my own kids. Uh, you know, don't, don't micromanage them. Don't nit nitpick every step along the way. Just give them a direction. Give them a path, not a title. You know what I mean? And uh, give them something they can travel along at their own pace and enjoy the view. And something that's wide enough so other people can travel alongside them. And the, and, and the path's open to everyone all the time. You know, it's, it's like we all, uh, we all may not travel with the same folks at the same speed, but we're all heading in the same direction. And uh, it really can be that simple. It really can be. Uh, you may have heard of uh, Karl Barth. He's arguably the most influential theologian of the 20th century. And he's a uh, Pope Pius XII called him the greatest theologian since Thomas Aquinas. Yeah. And he wasn't even Catholic. I mean, Barth, Barth wasn't Catholic. The Pope was absolutely Catholic. That's like <laughs> the number one requirement. You've got the really strict on that. They, they tossed out my, my application for Pope like that. I just I never had a chance. So Barth was a really heavy hitter in the theological world. And once, when a young student asked Barth if he could sum up uh, what was most important about his life, life's work in, 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 in just a few words, we could do it in a few words, and Barth thought for a moment, he smiled, and he said, yes, in the words of a song my mother used to sing to me, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Okay, so it took a forest worth of paper to, to publish all of this man's writings, but he could sum it all up with one line from a sweet little simple hymn, which I'm sure everybody in this room knows. Jesus loves me. Now it's so important to remember that it's that simple and that Jesus loves us. And speaking of St. Thomas Aquinas, at the feast of St. Nicholas back in 1273, that was a fun one. Probably remember it, it was uh, The great Catholic philosopher Theologian, and trust me, he's a really big deal. He really, I know at least one high school that's named after him. Uh, well, Aquinas was celebrating Mass, he was worshiping, when he received a res revelation that so affected him that he never wrote nor dictated ever again, leaving his great work, the Summa Theologia, unfinished. When later asked to return to writing, Aquinas said, I can write no more. I have seen things that make my writings like straw. It meant that they were worthless. Everything is great. Theologian, theologian par excellence, all he written was worthless. To, to give you an idea of what this means, it's kind of like if Steven Spielberg said, yeah, the music business, I mean, the movie business has really never been my thing. Or it's like if, um, Michelangelo said, I made a mess of the Sistine Chapel. Or it's like if Mozart said, the entirety of my compositions is utterly worthless. Or it's a little more concise in his native German. My music is a pooping. <laughs> but the point is, the point, and I really do have a point. It was a very big deal for Aquinas, a, a theological giant, giant whose writings have had a tremendous influence, not only on the church, but the whole of Western civilization to say that it all seemed worthless. Something happened 
during that encounter with God in, in worship, something he could never explain, something he could never fully flesh out in words, something more, something truly life-changing. And it's ironic, kind of ironic, that uh, Aquinas received this great gift on St. Nicholas Day, Santa Claus. I'm guessing he must have been a very good boy that year. <laughs> and Aquinas and Barth both had attempted to write out everything about God. I mean, everything. So many things. Ah, but the thing is, we can't carry volumes upon volumes of text in our heads. Or at least I can. I know I can. But, we, but what we can do is remember, remember that Jesus loved us. It's so important to remember that Jesus loves us. And not just Jesus, the, the, the whole Holy Trinity loves us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit love us and, and is, are with us. And God will show us what we need to see along our path. It really can be that simple. And we, can, we all get to be part of this process for our children and, and for each other. We get to remind each other that, that we are loved and, in, 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 and to encourage each other as we journey together in that, that same direction. Uh, we have to, we, we, have, we have all it takes. We have everything we need. We have God and each other. So be on the lookout for opportunities to remind and to guide and, and to encourage. Uh, years ago, I was teaching a pastor's class. I was basically teaching all kid, all the things I thought these kids ought to know before they get baptized. And I realized through a lot of conversation with the kids, getting to know them and their faith, uh, that they had been taught or they had learned that it's important to know about Jesus, but they hadn't been taught that they're supposed to try to act like Jesus. They had missed that part, that Jesus is a role model, somebody to follow. And uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm so glad I was paying attention and I, I caught that. And I was able to, to, to begin to teach them that. And basically what I told them, that acting like Jesus is loving God and other people. Treating other people the way you want to be treated. Helping people. And uh, after they had learned this, I remember one girl came to the pastor's class and said, I tried to act like Jesus for a whole day last week, and it was really hard. <laughs> Poor thing. I said, yeah, it, it, it really can be. I know it, it can be sometimes. But... Um, but, but if you keep at it, if you keep trying, it, 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 gets, it can get a little easier over time. And I encourage them never to beat themselves up if they find themselves struggling to act like Jesus. That's, that's just part of it. But no matter what, Jesus loves them. Jesus loves all of you. It's just that simple. Amen. And if you would like to become a member of this congregation, where you will often be reminded that Jesus loves you, we ask that you come forward after our communion.
mainly Marissa is in the process of picking out a new, or, or well, we worked on as a group. Is that a committee? Or just it's the, a Christian Aid committee. That is a Christian Aid, okay. Christian Aid committee is working on, uh, we're working on um, picking a new curriculum. And then we, we came to one, and, and then Marissa is like going through it with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> Watching the watch all the videos because you got like a, with the book like in the olden days you get a Sunday school lesson book and if there was something in there that you didn't like you didn't share with the class you didn't say that you skip over that but if it's on a video it's there and you got to deal with it and the kids are like well why is that and I'm like oh, ask your parents you know it's just some things come up. <laughs> that, you know, you really don't want to talk about with small children or even bigger children. So she's combing through it and then making it sure that it doesn't, you know, say anything negative about different groups of people, that everybody is, you know, welcome and God loves everybody. We want to make sure that our kids have a, a well-rounded, uh, 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 how do I say, like a, a well to, to love others like Jesus, like love everybody. We don't want to ex exclude anyone. So uh, we want to promote a very well-rounded, open-hearted faith with our, our young people. That's the direction we want to send them into, out into the world. Um, like Jesus, open to everybody. And that works both ways, though. That works both ways. Not only that that we are open to other people, but that sometimes we have to count on other people being open to us. You know, sometimes we're Jesus touching the leper, and sometimes we're the leper. It can happen. And uh, I think sometimes with young people, with people I've talked to, and the way I've kind of felt myself at one point in my life, uh, we feel like we, you know, gone straight too far off the path, and then we don't. We, we shouldn't be here. We shouldn't get to be at the Lord's table. We don't fit in here anymore. It's important to remember, remind our kids, they always do. They always, they're always, always, always welcome. They're always welcome back in the church, within the church. In a way, they never leave. They're still on our minds. They're still in our prayers, no matter what. But they're always welcome. They can always come to the table. Jesus never stops loving them. And the same is true for each and every one of us. And I'm so happy. That's one of the most important things to teach our kids. And I, I love to say uh, in worship is that everyone is welcome at this table. Everybody. Amen. Where it was on the night when our Lord was betrayed that he took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body. That is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please pray with me. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we give you thanks for this invitation to your son's table. We give you thanks for the love he has shown us from, from so, so very long ago that he gave his life for us to set us free from the power of sin and death. Help us, Lord, also to remember and to remind others that the door is always open, that the invitation is always present to this table. To, to remember and, and celebrate the saving acts through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray, we ask your blessing, Lord, upon the bread and the cup. We ask that this truly be a time of holy communion. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come to the table.
pray with me one more time. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this time of worship. We give you thanks for this time to celebrate together. We are so loved, and uh, we ask that your spirit be with us. Go with us on that path, following our Lord Jesus into eternity, into his heavenly kingdom. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.